Welcome back to another exciting edition of Rake Your Position, where four lifelong friends are living out their dreams from the comfort of their chairs. I'm Aaron, your host. I am Joe the Groundskeeper. I'd like to say I like my pitchers, like I like my women, tall, left-handed, and no balls. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous, guys. <laughs> like, I need to go after somebody else because there's no follow-up for that. But I am Jay Lee the Rover. Um, I like Corey. my pitchers like I like my pitchers. Pitching. Um, I'm Corey the Sadman. Uh, so would you say that you like your women like Randy Johnson? <laughs> hey, that dude's walked a lot of people in his career. So <laughs> let's find another. Let's find some bales. Well, he's tall and we left-handed. Do, we can do Rich, that later. Rich Hill got long hair. Yeah. Oh, my we'll figure gosh. It out. All right. Well, with that... Uh, we are fresh off the trade deadline, and we wanted to kick off the month of August with a fresh set of rankings uh, after all the teams at the top have shuffled their rosters. And so without further ado, we'll jump into that. I will tell you, five teams got votes. That's it. So we are all pretty similar, um, mm. but we'll see how they fell. So in fifth place, receiving... A fourth and three fifths was the Dodgers. In fourth place, receiving three thirds and a fourth is the Rangers. In third place, with a second, two fourths and a fifth, the Rays. Ooh. Baltimore oh, with four second place votes, and the Braves stay on top with four more first place votes. So there's no outliers to discuss. Um, the Diamondbacks have finally fallen off. You guys are welcome. Um, they're down what? to third place in the West, so you don't have to vote for them anymore. Did you, did you like, single-handedly do that? <laughs> I, try, I tried to keep out there, but I couldn't vote for them this time. I didn't do it. Uh, so we got these five, five teams to talk about. Uh, so let's just open up the floor. How did you vote, and why did you vote that way? I think I voted that exact way. Um, and, I mean, a little bit of it had to do with the deadline. I think the Dodgers and the Rangers both had a particularly good deadline. The Rangers haven't played well in the past couple of weeks, but they had a good deadline, so I think that keeps them there. Um, and the Dodgers, um, they added quite a bit. I don't think you bet against them either like it was fun i don't know if anybody saw lance lynn in his outing last night the first one with the dodgers like he went from throwing it was like under 50 percent four seam fastballs with the white Sox to through he threw like almost 80 percent four seam fastballs last night which is yeah they basically his told thing. him not to throw the cutter and yeah apparently that was a problem <laughs> and and still a, a big energy guy he had some emphasis had some on big Yes, uh, he he brings the energy in uh, equal to the amount of space that he takes up. Wow, um, that's not it's. It, it's hey, not he's not coming on the pod. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think just the Rays have scuffled a little bit, but you can't. Well, I was going to say you can't consistently play that good all year, but there's a team at, at number one that has pretty much done that. Um, and then I think the Orioles are a pretty easy second place. What's wrong with your hat? Uh, it was a little crooked. I okay, just... well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you fixed that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I think... A... Go for it. Yeah, I think I had um, the third and fourth team switched with you, Corey. I, you had the Rangers fourth? Uh, sure. I know. Okay. Yeah, so I, I had them third just because of the, the pickup they made at the deadline. Uh, I think you could put the Rays there with with what the record says but um if they made any moves they might they may have, were they pretty low key or whatnot it wasn't I got Aaron you know, Savali, it wasn't and it's like Savali a, who's been pitching okay I mean he's like been a, pitching good for him but he's not like a stud yeah like a three four starter something like that yeah it's not I mean it's not all the all the moves the Rangers made so 
I just kind of put him in that spot more so because of the trades rather than um, where they're at in the standings, which, you know, they're, they're not that far behind. All these teams have at least 60 wins. So the standings, yeah, I think the trades um, way pretty heavy ranking these guys. What about you, Jerry? What you got? Um, I, I don't think I factored in any of the trade deadlines yet because I think some of these people didn't have their pieces quite yet to make for me to make the full judgment. Like I almost put the Astros in instead of the Dodgers. I literally flipped a coin and it landed on the Dodgers. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. the Astros are, are right there again. So as much as you guys know, I love the Astros. That's probably why I didn't <laughs> put them on there. Uh, but for me, I mean, I think I've said it since we've put the Braves in the number one spot, like, and it's not to make Cooney happy. Cause you know, I don't try to do that, but I don't, like I, that team's electric. Like I don't see a weak spot, and that's what's scary. So if they stay healthy, it's going to be a very tough team to beat. Um, from top to the bottom of the roster, rotation, bullpen, um, and they just they went out and made the few moves that they needed to make. Um, I wanted to put Baltimore there, but you just you can't factor the Braves not being number one right now. Yeah, I think Baltimore need to do a little bit more on the pitching side's trade deadline. I think they're still vulnerable, but I'm with Corey and Joe. I did factor the trades when I started raking these. Um, And so I was the one that put Tampa fifth. Um, They were 9-16 and in July. And then out of these five teams had the quietest deadline. I mean, the Dodgers needed middle infield help and some pitching, and they went out and got it. Not huge names, but they fixed their holes. And Rangers, uh, you know, added two potentially game-changing pitchers at the top of the rotation. Plus, they added Chapman a month ago, too. So I took that in consideration. Just, mm-hmm. um, and they seem to be going for it. So, yeah, I put Rays fifth, and I had Rangers third. The only reason I didn't put the Astros in, because I didn't want four AL teams, so I went with the Dodgers. That's not a very good reason, but I was like, man, I got to put another NL team in here, right? It's better than my reason, so I think that's fair. I think Joe alluded to it last week, though. I think the Astros could have done something with their outfield. I mean, they they didn't do anything there. and um, We're getting Verlander, and Verlander's still pitching good. Scherzer, you know, is on the decline, it seems like, but Verlander was still pitching well. Um, I think they should have done more. <laughs> yeah, uh, Astros are probably. I had I had three teams that I were I think probably I would say my first teams out, and that was the Astros, the Reds, and the Cubs. Um, <laughs> I think that they are are good, um, and they did some things. Um, I mean, it, it, their track record again the past couple of weeks like that bumps them up like you get I, I, the recency bias um, they've been real good who, who um, are they beaten uh, they beat the Reds last night 20 to 9 so that was pretty good uh, <laughs> okay dang that's nuts though I didn't even see that, that helps the plus minus yeah well that's, yeah. What, that's the thing like if you look at the run differential on the central it's they're plus 67 everybody else is negative so it's not yeah. particularly close there um, if you look at expected win loss Cincinnati's 54 and 55 and the Cubs are 60 and 47 for the, for the expected, which again, you know, expected win loss, uh, amounts for about what it does on paper. So, you know, yeah. Makes um, you feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's just, I think looking at those teams, like, like I would put them above anybody else in the West besides the Dodgers. I put them above anybody yeah. else in the East besides <clears throat> the Braves. Um, I think I just read that they added a fourth wild card team, and that's how you get in. It's the expected win loss, so yeah. you might be on something there. There you go. I hope so. Yeah, um, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I just said that sentence, and I think that means that I messed my rankings up. But that's not important. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who's keeping track? If not anybody, you. it would be me. Yeah, yeah it should obviously, be you. obviously, I'm not. So. <laughs> Speaking uh, of, of keeping track, did we? I know we all we did our prediction show last week for all the trades. How? Yeah, were you uh, able to keep track of all that? Oh yeah, or, let's, or let's talk that about that. Um, yeah, segue because guys, we don't have to. Not great. <laughs> um, hey, let's just say we haven't been in this business long enough to have great inside sources. Mine's true. a neighbor across the street. He doesn't leave his house. <laughs> um, I don't know who you always are. 
Yeah. I didn't have one. I think that's where I messed up. Yeah. Mine was inside my brain. Um. So, if the player got traded, uh, I believe Aaron called three correctly. Um, and two of them are one trade. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think I had two. And then, Jared, of the people that got traded, you guessed zero correct. Mm. Along with Joe. I thought of, I had one. No. Of the players who are on the team that we said they would still be on, Joe had five, which wins. Because he picked five people to stay, and they all stayed. Yes, so, sir. yes. Uh, I don't know. It was I, was, I it was embarrassing. We all should be it's embarrassed. Golf, it's golf score, right? No, those GMs should be embarrassed. We'd be in the playoffs. That's that's true. You know, unlimited budget. <laughs> uh, nobody telling us no. We'd be in the playoffs. But yeah, it's it was we, it could have went better. Um, so I guess Aaron and Joe kind of win because Aaron guessed the most people that actually got traded correct, and then Joe, I guess, guessed the people that didn't get traded correct. Um, so next sorry, year I... the strat is just put everybody staying put. Uh, uh, that <laughs> probably. I well, let's see here. Well, besides well, Bellinger, Joe might have guessed all of the people that did stay put. That did I'm stay sorry put. that I said the trade that everybody wanted to see. So you're welcome, people. Which one's that? that? Nolan Aaron. I don't Rogers? remember half of them. Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> sure, are the and Giants. The, the Lynn, Lynn Kelly trade was one of the first ones. I was all excited. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm starting off good. And then it was, nope, nope, nope. Yeah. I think, yeah, we, we, because it was like, th- you had three and I had two, like halfway with the, yeah, like, I was bragging six, in five or six text yeah. for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and I had to stop. Yeah. Well, I think I had every release pitcher and their mom going to the Rangers. So. You did, and none of them went there. Not a single one. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll we'll do better next year, guys. Probably not, but we can act like we will. Can't be worse. Um, knock on wood. Sure. <laughs> I don't think I can get negative one. Well, as we we're talking about <laughs> trades, uh, we thought we would uh, hand out some grades because we're clearly so good at this. Yep. Uh, so we were going to start by uh, talking about our own teams. Uh, so, Jerry, why don't you start us off? What did you think about the Cardinals? Uh, is it weird if I wrote down three different grades? <laughs> no. I was all okay. over the place on these guys, too. Seems on par. Um, I mean, I think what I gave them a B-plus on was the fact that you got rid of people who were going to be free agents. So, I gave that a B-plus. Um, you made some moves for some prospects that could potentially, you know, do you something and – you know, a lot of these people that they traded, definitely I didn't see coming back regardless. Um, I think the one I liked the most was the deadline deal with the Orioles. I liked what they got back from Baltimore. Um, feel good about that one. And then it seems like we got a pretty decent haul from the Rangers, too, for Jordan Montgomery. So, I mean, the prospects we got from there instantly are in our top 10 pipeline for prospects. So, so that feels pretty good. So, I guess if I had overall, I'd give it a B with everything that the Cardinals did. <laughs> Joe, what do you get? Yeah, I would probably be about in the same the same area just to hit on a few things that Jared already said. I think the young had an option, but um I think it was a team option. It, all these guys were gone. Um I think the young's peaked like back in 19. He's ex- he's incredibly replaceable. I like the young, but he's just never got his bat to a place. <laughs> I mean, he can play defense. I mean, he's not a liability in the field, and he can pop some homer every now and then, but, you know, I can do that too, so sign me. Um, Jordan Hicks, <laughs> we we all know that I do not like Jordan Hicks. He's oh, no. short, he's right-handed, and he's got balls all over the place, so I just told you I didn't <laughs> like anybody like that. Um, jo- I mean, Jordan Montgomery pitched well for us, but I don't think he – he doesn't. I don't think he carries you in a in a playoff series. He's probably you know a number three solid. I don't think he's anything above that. He's not spectacular. So, expiring contract gone. Chris Stratton, wildly replaceable. Um, and then I like I like Flaherty too. But man, he he peaked in nineteen or whenever you know that season was. Um, Man, the Cardinals have had some some talented pitchers that have either through injury or regression or whatever in the past handful of years have 
kind of stunk. I thought the returns for rental players were, you know, but what do we know about guys in the minors other than what we read on the internet? So it seems like they got pretty good returns, maybe a few with some high upsides, some few, a few with uh, some low floors, like some of the position players they got. So yeah, yeah. I, I give them a solid B. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Before we move off to Cardinals, I guess the only thing I would not grade them well on was, I mean, you pretty much told Carlson you're trading him. He's a bench player now, and then you don't trade him. <laughs> like, that's got to be a really crappy feeling to come back to the doghouse. But, I, I mean, you're a professional athlete, so I guess you move on from that. But not a good feeling. And then to stick around with O'Neal, I'm, I'm not – I'm sure Joe loves him, but I'm not the biggest O'Neal fan. <laughs> uh, hit, hit a bomb tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did. So, I mean, that would be the only thing I'd be like, well – I mean, would like to see what you could have got out of Carlson, but maybe their asking price was too high. So who knows? Yeah, as a uh, unbiased third party, I had them, you know, similar in a B. Just I was looking at the the returns. I don't, you, you don't know these prospects. I mean, but um, all of them are listed in their top thirty, so that's pretty cool. Turn all these rentals into nothing but top thirty picks uh, in your prospects. So that's pretty good. But yeah, I think they just, you know, they they should have done more. They still have. Edmund and Donovan, both of them aren't going to play when win comes up. Still got Yepes, Baker, and Gorman. They're not all going to play if you still got Goldie. O'Neal, Carlson, Lars, Gomez, Burleson. Where are they going to play? You got Walker. You know, I mean, Gomez hitting bombs in AAA, so he's got to come up at some point. So, yeah, uh, they got good returns, but I think they should have done more. <clears throat> I don't really have anything to add. I, I, think, <laughs> well, I mean, you guys have uh, you hit it on the head. It's it's they still have, they still have all the problems they had before. Yeah. I mean, the, a lot of what they moved were pitchers, and that that doesn't help your position player. Yeah. Uh, backlog here, so it's it's, um, and and maybe their asking prices were too high. I can kind of segue that into into talking about the Cubs, um, because I know Carlson. His rumor was Yankees were inquiring, and uh, I know that because Yankees were a little interesting. But Cashman basically came out and said that, which I, I think he says every year, like the injuries they've had would be whenever the people get healthy will be equivalent to adding guys to the deadline, and they didn't want to pay the prices that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, GMs love to say that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they didn't want to pay the prices for what people were asking. But in that in that same vein, uh, Jesse Rogers, who's a writer for ESPN, and he used to be, used to be, I think, on like the Cubs beat, and he's he's not anymore. But I think he's still got quite a bit of connections there. He's saying that um, the, the the Yankees were apparently prepared to offer Jason Dominguez for Bellinger as a rental, um, but obviously probably not for Carlson. And I, after that, I was like, well, you know, maybe maybe you guys should have thought about that a little bit more. But no, I, I, I love. I love uh, Cody so far, but as far as the grade, I mean, I I think I think we're all going to be in the same ballpark with all of our teams. I'd probably give the Cubs a B plus because there's just always you're always going to think they could have done a little bit more than what they did. Um, But maybe the Braves guy who thinks that his his team's perfectly fine and uh, they are uh, perfectly fine. When when the next ten World Series, why don't we just why don't we crown them now? But um, they. Adding Candelario, that's a nice little surprise. Um, it helps out. And then they said he's going to play first, which was a little surprising to me because I think the need is more so at, at third. What's his first name? Jamer. Nice. Yeah. Uh, he always, I always, uh, they call him the candy man, but I, anytime I say his last name, it always reminds me of the candle from Beauty and the Beast, um, which I forget it's actual, it, the candle's name now. He's- his name is Lumiere. Yeah, but is that but the guy's name is nothing no, like but candy. the guy's name is Candelario. So it's just like it could be you have Lum, okay. Lumiere, and then his brother is Candelario. Uh, I don't know. I got I got I, I think a lot about Disney these days. Um, <laughs> I thought about Disney my whole life. So okay, um, <laughs> but uh, B plus, like they added the offense. It would have been really nice to see him get. A bullpen arm, which is, you know, her, I think, always readily available. They get a guy from the Royals, um, but maybe a little bit bigger name than than that guy who I'm not going <laughs> to. He's got four letters. There's two vowels together in the middle. Um, I can't try and say that one. 
Um, but he's a, like a side armor. No, oh, go ahead. I, I don't want to. Um, is it I mean, Joe's was already made two comments on here. Maybe so. Jose Quas, C U A S. Mm-hmm. Um, so they added him, but I, it just would have been nice. Like you always just want your back end of your bullpen to be solid. Like you want to go into if you have a lead in the seventh inning, you want to feel comfortable. And I don't know. It, depending on the day, I don't. I don't think that's true for me right now with the Cubs. Um, Alzale has been really good, so maybe if we get to the ninth, I feel pretty good about that. But there's still just kind of those middle innings where I just don't know that I. I, I have the the confidence that they're gonna be able to bridge that gap. So it would have been nice to add another another bullpen arm, but but adding a Candelario, super nice. Um, I I. Still think he should have, you know, play third. But I don't know. He's going to play first, and he's hit really well so far. Yeah, in the... He's a good third baseman, so that's weird. I know. That's yeah. like I think he did, this year is especially. I think his defensive numbers are are mm-hmm. not terrible. You must be forgetting about Patrick Wisdom over there at third. Patrick Wisdom hasn't well, played. Been first. Yeah, he's been here for a while. Um, I just don't get what the Cubs do, and I still don't think maybe they sneak into the third wild card, but. They're not a threat, so now you're gonna be stuck with Strowman, and now are you gonna extend him now that he's hurt? I mean, that's bad timing. I don't know. Yeah, I think they just I, played it super safe, made one trade, and got caught in between a little bit. I mean, he's the best rental bat, I think, on the market. Once mm-hmm. once Bellinger got pulled, so I mean, it's it it was kind of a tweener trade, but. It's again, if if the past two weeks are indicative of anything moving forward, like that's it's it's a weird thing. And again, the underlying numbers, like you know, everybody's looking at this now. Like we should be the best team in this division. Um, and as I don't, I don't think the division's out of the question. They're four games back. It's it's August second. Um, we got is, we got is the Candyman under play. control? No, or plays a free agent. Yeah, and they, they gave up a couple guys. Uh, DJ Harris, I think, was kind of the bigger piece. He's a pitcher who's got some pretty electric stuff, but I think he's got some control problems. So that would be, yeah. Get him out of there. His, <laughs> his, his balls are all over the place. Um, <laughs> and then... Uh, Get away from the title of this episode. <laughs> I just wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'll say... Know, I'll, go ahead. You care if I jump in here, Corey? No, go ahead. You know, when we found out or figured out um, that the Cubs were going to be buyers, what, what they, they they told people they weren't going to trade Belly, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I I'm sorry, listeners, but I mean, I hope they lose every game the rest of the season. But I will say it's cool to see your team. It's kind of like with the Angels. You're like, you know, this has got a snowball j- chance and AC double hockey stick, but we're we're going for it. And same thing with the Cubs. Like they have a they have a better chance of making the playoffs. I don't think they make much of a run, but so just to see him go for it, I was like, you know, go for it. And I would, I would assume they're having conversations with their soon to be free agents behind closed doors, right? So they must think, you know, we got a decent, we got a good shot of signing Strowman. We got a good shot of signing Cody to not trade these guys. And you, like you said, the NL Central is weak, and then I don't see that changing in the next couple of years. I don't know. There's, there's some young guys that are playing well, but um, so I, I thought it was cool to see him go ahead and go for it. You know, though they might, they might not only sneak in, they might win the Central. Yeah, mm-hmm. you got you just got to get in the playoffs and be the hot team. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's nice to see him try. That third wild card really changes things, though. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. And I, I think because like it was I felt like it was kind of a tame deadline. Um I mean you, you saw Verlander and Scherzer move, but even with that, like I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I didn't feel like those were were near like some of the deals that we've seen in the past. Like uh, And we kinda of talked about this going into it, like the clear cut sellers at the bottom, mm-hmm. except for maybe the Cardinals didn't have anybody you wanted uh if the white Sox would have moved cease that would have been different Mm -hmm. 
they moved the people that you knew were going to get moved and none of them were really killing it anyway. So yeah, for the Braves, I gave them a B minus. They picked up the pieces they needed. We knew they needed some pitching while some guys were rehabbing to get them through August, but then September Brad hand might, I expect Brad hand to be, you know, the second lefty, maybe even the third lefty come the playoffs. If mentor and Lee are both healthy and ready. But Johnson and Chirinos probably won't be on the playoffs. They probably won't pitch in September once everybody's healthy. And then they also needed to upgrade the utility. They got Nicky Lopez, which basically they got Nicky Lopez for nothing. Um, mm -hmm. They they got Taylor Hearn for cash when he was DFA'd. He threw one inning, got lit up, and they flipped him for Nicky Lopez, who is the best infield defender in the game. Do you think um, Hearn goes in? Uh, to the hall in a Braves hat. <laughs> I Braves mean, logo. it's just crazy. Like the the Kansas City could have just picked up her and off the DFA off the off waivers, and and said they shipped out Lopez for him. And Lopez has got another year or so of control. So I mean, he's not going to play. Um, the Braves play the same infield every day. So barring an injury, and I I don't know if if someone got hurt, I assume Grissom would probably leapfrog over him and start anyway. Um, but yeah, so they could have got better options in this in these spots. They could have gotten you know Chapman would have been nice or a bigger starter than Trinos. But Freed is pitching Friday in Chicago. He's coming off the IL. Kyle Wright's going to be back by the end of August. It's all of a sudden you don't need a starter. So if Trinos can get us three or four more starts like he did today, five innings, and get the win, the Braves will be just fine. But to get an A, they would have had it add a big bat, somebody to play left field or to take some DH at-bats away from Ozuna. But they didn't really need to do that. So it is what it is. I knew it was going to be kind of boring for the Braves, but they're set. Mm -hmm. They're ready to go. Hmm. Maybe I just grade wrong because – I gave an A minus. I mean, I, I don't think a team needs when well, they don't need much. Can't really grade them for not going after something more than what they did. But um, I would have liked to see Duvall come back to Atlanta. That was what I was kind of hoping for. Yeah, I was confused by that because Kevin Pilar's played really good uh, as the right-handed bat in the platoon. And the Braves didn't face a left-handed starter the entire month of July, I don't think. It was like 30... 30 or 31 straight games without facing a lefty. So it was like a spot that's really not even that valuable. Rosario is going to play out there and Azuna is going to DH with the other catcher DHing some. So, man, I yeah, always thought that was weird. Shout out to Kevin Pilar. That's a guy I've always liked. Plays mm -hmm. 100, Dude, he's, 100 every time he's hour. in there, he plays once a month and makes some ridiculous smashing into the wall awesome defensive play that no other left fielder on the team would have made when he's out there, he gets them. And it's Ozuna over. wouldn't have made that. I, Ozuna would smash on the wall, but the ball would be over <laughs> the field. So <laughs> no, Ozuna keeps hitting. So whatever, just leave him at DH and let him be, I guess. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about some other teams. Let's give out uh, some A's and some F. So we'll go back to Jared. You start us off again. Um, what's what's a team that got an A for you? Do you want me to do? I have two teams. Or do you want me to just, just do one? So, just do one. Because yeah, there's probably yeah, no, there's probably not a lot of there, barely four. So I teams. don't. So I don't get to pick. Do the Corey rule where I pick five teams. <laughs> we say I'll go last so I can just sweep up all the remnants. Give us, give us both. Let's see. Go, go ahead, give us both. Why not? Uh, I'll just, I'll play Corey's rule. I can't pick Otani as MVP, and now I can't play <laughs> one team. Got it. <laughs> Right. Um, but speaking of Otani, I went with the Angels. I liked what they did, brought in um, with Giolito and then that one with Crone and uh, Grichik. I was, again, Skip probably didn't like him. I liked Grichik in St. Louis. Um, but it seems like they're making trying to make some moves to sneak into the playoffs for Trout to get healthy and keep Otani happy. Um, but I think adding another starter for them was huge. So. Um, and the one that they got. So I gave the Angels an A. I agree. Um, 
I I would almost just give them the A for effort. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, just because I I it was cool to see how they kind of flipped their script. Yeah, and I don't know, and you know, it was never really the angel script, but it was kind of the media script of of you know where is Otani going to go? And finally, they said, nope, we're not going to do it. And then, um, you know, they added the pieces. We'll see. I mean, so like Giolito had the one really great year. And then he's had not bad years, I don't think, um, but not n- never never quite back to gotten back to where he was. So I, you know, that being said, I think he's the. If I had to choose between, well, I don't even know if that's true. I was going to say I'd take him over Lance Lynn, but I don't know. I mean, certainly this year, based on stats, I'd take him over Lance Lynn, but yeah. historically, I'd, you know, Lance he's Lynn, younger. Yeah, <clears throat> um, but no, I, I agree. I mean, the Angels. Again, I, the the pieces weren't all that impressive. Again, they have Trout coming back at some point, so that's a, you know another addition by hopefully staying healthy. Um, but it, it was just nice to see them say they're going to go for it and then actually make some deals happen. And their farm system wasn't isn't super great. wasn't super great. It's pretty awful now. Um, so it was it was impressive to see that they were basically willing to give up. Pretty much most of what all they had. Yeah. Which they made time to do it. Too. They've been trying all yeah. year to plug their holes and uh, fill their gaps. And so give them an A for effort. Yeah. Joe, who'd you give um, an A to? I mean, I guess I'll kind of state the obvious because I'm so dumb. I can't state the unobvious. But, um, Probably to the detriment of the Angels, you know, they moved, they made the moves first, and then the other teams in their division are like, all right, well, we're going to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So Texas picking up probably two starters that, if they're healthy, would be one of their – a part of their rotation in the playoffs in Montgomery and Scherzer. Um, they picked up a few other pieces. I mean, the, her run differential is still mm-hmm. – it's still crazy, so – I mean, their their run scored's nuts, and if they have, where's uh where's Degrom at? He's out. He's, yeah, like all season. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I knew that. Yeah, um, they'll have but, six starters once everybody gets back, though this year. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, getting the getting the top of the rotation guy like like Scherzer and maybe your back end starter in the playoffs. With already with the team that you have that the scoring runs, I'll uh, I'll say they position themselves probably the best at the deadline to continue their season long success. Mm-hmm. And like they already grabbed Chapman a month ago, we've mentioned that, and Stratton's been pitching good. So I mean, it's a, we we all tried to send them a right hand reliever. None of us picked Stratton, but Leclerc mm-hmm. just sent, got. What's that? I sent them all. I said all yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Look, Clark just got activated not too long ago. I, I think he's missed quite a bit of time, so he's a big power righty if he's on. So I had them down as a possible A um, as well. So Corey, who'd you have? Did you have anybody different? Um, yeah. yeah I'd, let's get his scroll out real quick. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna go in a little bit of a different um, direction here, and I I actually really liked what the Mets did. Um, Although Scherzer came out afterwards and like talked about conversations I love they it. were having in the front office, and he we, there... yeah we we have to talk about that a little bit later. Okay, but so I don't I I like the deals they made. I'm not sure that that's the conversation you should have. Um, <laughs> not with Scherzer. not one that goes public. No, no, not yeah. with Scherzer. Is, yeah, but because uh, yeah, Scherzer he's 38, 39, ultimate competitor. Um, but uh, I mean, we're already beating around the bush here. But you know, coming out and basically saying, you know, we're not, we're not even going to try and win next year, um, which is, which is wild. Because I mean, I, I, that essentially rules out. I think that they make any sort of effort, assuming Otani hits the the free agent market to to sign Otani. But I just don't know how you, I, unless that was just like, hey, wave your wave your no trade because we're not going to try. Um, which is, <laughs> okay. Like Alon, because Alonzo, I think his last year of uh, 
arbitration control was next year. And so then yeah. 2025, he's this 2025 was the year that was mentioned of when they're going to try to compete. So presumably Alonzo probably not there. I guess Lindor's still there. He's now two years They've older got a already. Full infield coming up. That'll be ready yeah. in 2025. That's so true. Alonzo yeah, will be interesting. Um, it was it was just a weird, a weird thing that they said. But as far as how they handled what they had, you know, it's you can't. We we haven't really seen teams pay for prospects until now, um, and it was you know basically sending these big pitchers, um, and and paying off the majority of their salaries and getting these these. Mm-hmm. You know, top top prospects and and you know little little Acuna and, and Luis uh, Luis on Hell I guess is probably somewhere how you say that. Um, who's you know going to go right up to the top of their list and uh, as of today on MLB dot com all ten of the prospects they got in their various trades mm-hmm. um, are in their top thirty. So they just added yeah. ten prospects to the top thirty. Acuna is number two. Gilbert from Houston is number four. Clifford, mm-hmm. the other guy from Houston, is number six. And Vargas from Miami is number nine. Yeah. So four guys in the top ten. I mean, and, they did it right. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, they're able to do that by eating a lot of money. It's, it's the, you know, hey, we'll pay down the contract for a little bit better player. And, and mm-hmm. I, I think <laughs> whenever, yeah, especially whenever you obviously aren't afraid of spending money. Um, that's how you, that's, that's one way to go about it. Um, and it was, it was an interesting, it's not something you see. So that's why I'd, I'd probably give them the A it's, it's not fun for Mets fans, I'm sure, but it was, it was a cool, cool may not be the right word. It was an interesting, interesting t- way to, way to approach it. And I, I think they did a good job. So I, I'd give my A to the Mets. Hmm. Yeah. I, I had them actually down as, as an A plus I had them as my favorite. Hmm. Um, oh, sorry favorite deadline so i agree with everything you just said there um if you're going to go for it <laughs> go for it and they did um my other a so i'll go with this because you guys mentioned the rangers and the mets i like the marlins and i texted you guys that yesterday I, I gave them an a as well um adding bell and burger to the corners and did you see today burger's debut was five dollar burgers at the ballpark and they're normally 13. <laughs> so all burgers are five dollars today. Dang. First game in. And then Bell and Jazz went back to back today. Mm-hmm. Uh the first time all year Miami went back to back. So everything looked perfect for the Marlins today. So we'll see how I keep it up. But think about the rankings. I probably would have had the Marlins like six or seven. They were close to close for me. Um, they've been hanging in there with no offense. And if Bell and Berger play a little rejuvenated on a fun young team in the playoff race and step it up a little bit. Um, you know, Bell's been an all-star and Berger hits uh, the ball a long way. Mm-hmm. So uh, with Soler and J- the healthy Jazz hitting behind the rise, that's not a bad lineup all of a sudden. Um, they added Robertson back their pin and they added Weathers, which is inter- interesting. Reminds me a lot of like Lazardo last year, bringing in this once- highly regarded lefty prospect that didn't put together in Oakland comes Miami pitch as well. So maybe they got something with weathers if they can unlock him a little bit, but yeah, they didn't have a whole lot to fix and they just needed some bats and they got two guys that we didn't know were going to get moved. Yeah. Nobody was talking about these guys and uh, here they are. And they both got a couple years of control. So, um, so I think it was fun to see. We didn't know, what the new GM Ing would do uh, in a buying position. And we didn't know what the new ownership would do uh, when they were on the playoff picture. And so far I like their first, their first go at it um, as a combo. Uh, I think they did some good stuff there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, we've talked about all year about how they keep winning games that they maybe shouldn't. And uh, also about how good their pitching is. So, um, and I, I really don't think they gave up. I don't want to say they didn't give up a lot, but they, uh, they didn't give up any huge, huge guys, huge prospects. Jake Eater going to uh, the White Sox. He's mm-hmm. one of their top pitching prospects. It's a, it's a nice gift for the White Sox, and he'll probably be ready at some point next year. 
and then Khalil Watson, right? Is that who? Oh went? yeah, Robertson? Watson. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was Bell. But, but that was for Bell. Okay, I yeah. know they sent him out, but I didn't write down where he went. Uh, but they have other infield prospects, so yeah. And they didn't have a first base bat, so that's not that's not bad. But eater for but we got Burger for a couple of years too, so mm-hmm. it's one thing to send a top pitching prospect for a rental, but when you're getting a couple of years of a guy, yep, because they've got tons of pitching, so. I like the Marlins moves. <clears throat> what about your Fs, Jared? Start us off with your Fs. Um, I think it's pretty easy for this one. When you guys think of the New York Yankees, what do you think of? <laughs> Pay to win, uh, Mister Glass. I think it's been twenty-one years since they won World Series. Uh, yeah, you nailed it. Y'all nailed it. It's uh, you don't worry about prospects. You trade for people, you pay people. Um, there was talks of them being everywhere, and then all of a sudden they're getting nobody. So they got Kenny Middleton. <laughs> they got okay. a random My bad. pitcher who's having. <laughs> My bad, sorry. <laughs> and like when your excuse is everybody's injured, then don't wouldn't you just try to trade for people who aren't injured? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's good philosophy. So, <laughs> I yeah, about yeah. That. I don't know. I mean, I gave I gave the Yankees an F. And that's why, because they're not being the Yankees. And maybe there's teams that don't want to trade for the, for the Yankees anymore because they're tired of that rain. But, I mean, like you said, they haven't won a World Series in 20 years. So, yeah. um, they didn't Stein seem like Brenner they were wouldn't too, stand for it. Right. <laughs> they didn't I seem saw like, that, that. Oh, go ahead, sir. No, I'm just going to say, they didn't seem like they were as aggressive as what everybody led on to think that they would be. So, I saw a stat that backed you up last week, and I haven't shared it with you yet. But we were all, especially you, were were pushing them to get a left-handed bat <laughs> in their lineup. I saw a stat that last year they had the 29th. They were 29th in, out of 30 teams in left-handed plate appearances. And this year they're 28th, something like that. Like they're at the Ridiculous. bottom of the league for two years in a row now. And before that, they were like consistently top five. But for whatever reason, they have not put. And of course, Rizzo is still batting third. And his last like two months is like hitting under 100 something like that like yeah, i think it's, it's like one 150 or something like that has it gotten back yeah. up that high <laughs> it's not good like it's, he's hitting worse than joey gallo hit there joey gallo was getting ripped on the entire time he was there it, it's bad so that's the only that's the only left you got playing every day and he's he's the worst hitter in the american league that's it's strange so i like that that for the yankees i would find a way and you guys know I like having a beard. I would shave my beard to, if I was a left-handed hitter and go play at Yankee Stadium because I would have minimum every year 65 home runs. Minimum. 70 hits. I like it. Hey. Still. <laughs> Get the ball. Run, baby. Yeah. 65 RBIs as well. Just a <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to help base. Uh, IKF is the only one to like, hit like over 300 since the All-Star break, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. They've trashed on him plenty of times as well. Yeah. Yankee, Yankee fans. Yankee. Yep. Uh, Joe, you got any Fs to hand out? Oh, <laughs> sure. How much time do you have? <laughs> let me um let me just click on this baseball uh, base on balls per nine and start naming names here. They're at the league. <laughs> um no, I can throw out some S, I guess. It's kind of harsh, I think, but um y- y'all got notes, so I'm gonna probably say a couple things here because you can expand on on stuff um i thought <laughs> that's kind of funny too but um the dude from the tigers it's like no i'm not going to la <laughs> was his yeah. name rodriguez yeah eduardo eduardo um, he hasn't said why yet and, has he yeah and uh, uh actually he did today he came out and said it was nothing against the dodgers it's just his family's in, on the east coast so he didn't want to be that far away from them but yeah. i think it's because he hates the dodgers mm-hmm and I, I mean, that's not, I guess that, that's not the F, but they're, I guess that is the F, but you know, the, um, the Dodgers, maybe more so for the Tigers, not like trading high on that guy. How do you not have a plan B? Like you wait yeah. all the way to the very end and they're like, I mean, how do you, I don't know. It just seemed like they really dropped the ball there. Um, and then um, I feel like Baltimore should have picked up somebody and I, I don't know who was available, but they Eduardo got Rodriguez. They, yeah, right there. I mean, they 
you look at their pitching, they don't really have an ace. Flaherty is not an ace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't see how that rotation takes them very far into the playoffs. And they're just, you know, they're, they're young. Maybe they're, they're wanting to stay young and have continued success rather than trying to go all in right now. But so that was a little disappointing to see them not, um, not do a little bit more. And lastly and shortly, the Giants, the Giants have been right there all year and they really didn't, I don't know if they made any, they made some minor moves, I think, but uh, we have a buddy who's a Giants fan and they just seem to always play well with like, oh, Brendan Crawford's our best player. Well, he's a solid player, but like if, they do it with a bunch of guys you don't hear of. So yeah, I, I think they maybe could have made some moves to stay, continue to stay in the race. But maybe Are you talking about their big acquisition of AJ Pollock? Yeah, yeah, that was the biggest move. The fish man. They got confused. They thought it was, they thought it was Mike Trout, but it was a different fish. Wrong fish. <laughs> yeah, wrong fish. <laughs> so I don't know necessarily if you give them Fs, but you know, I I, I wish they would have done a little bit more. What do you got, Corey? No, you give them an F. I, I think those are all good. And so Eduardo, he took leave last year, just like in the middle of the season. Um due to personal matters and like nobody really knows why. Um, so it's, it seems like there's something going on uh, with, with him <laughs> outside of, of baseball things. Uh, but so I, yeah, it, it was weird, but um, if Maya, he wants to go to the East coast though, like yeah. Baltimore added starters, Miami added a starter, Philly added Lorenzen, you know? So yeah, I'm with Joe on that. How do you have a plan B? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Good call. So, since Joe named three, I'll name two. Um, and mine is the AL Central, outside of the White Sox. What is yours? Yeah. AL, the nice. AL Look at that. Central. <laughs> well, I'm taking, I'm taking all your stuff then. Um, well, I could just talk. I'll talk about the. I was going to mostly talk about the Guardians, but the, the. I can't talk about the Guardians without talking about the Twins as well. But the Guardians, I just don't get it. They're two and a half games back, and then they trade a rotation piece. They trade their first baseman they sign in the offseason. And if I'm in their position, like I had them adding people whenever we talked last week, like two and a half games, not a big deal. <laughs> um, and it's it's just a... I don't get it. And then at the same time, the twins didn't do anything. But if you see what the guardians are doing, like maybe they had deals like lined up and they see like, and then like, you know, Jonah Hill taps on Brad Pitt's shoulder. And then they're like, Hey, the, <laughs> the, the guardians just traded away these guys. And they're like, then Brad, Half Pitt the just, field of their best pitcher. <laughs> yeah. Then Brad Pitt picks up the phone. He's like, Oh, actually you don't, never mind. I don't think we need to do anything. See you later. And it's just, I don't get what was happening there. And it's, I mean, it was interesting kind of across the board where you saw divisions that just didn't really make moves mm-hmm. um, like the East. Well, I guess the, the Marlins did as, as far as adding the divisions that didn't really make moves. The the NL Central, relatively tame. Uh, AL Central, absolutely no adding whatsoever going on. Um, and then even, I mean, the AL East, like there were little bits and pieces, but uh, I mean, the, the, the big additions you saw were the AL West. I think the NL West, and then specifically the Dodgers, and maybe the D-backs to a little bit lesser extent because they the had a Padres. lot of. Padres. Why are the Padres adding more? Yeah, than the Indians. <laughs> I know, the, but the so yeah, the, the the Guardians is where I was going to start, but then at the same time, like I feel like when you talk about the Guardians, you got to talk about the Twins and about how they didn't do anything. But why would they? So I I don't know what's going on in the AL Central, but it was I don't know embarrassing. <laughs> for, I would think for them. And I I feel sad about that. So sorry to steal your thunder on both. No, your you're Andrew. fine. I had F for the AL Central. Mm-hmm. Exact same reason. Twins won the won the trade deadline by doing nothing. They traded a reliever for a different reliever. I didn't get that either. I still don't understand what they were doing because Lopez was really good last year, and they just traded him for Dylan Floro. I don't I don't if that's a money thing or what was going on there, but. Yeah, I mean, White Sox did good selling, but everybody yeah. sold in division, and the Twins just sitting there. So that's my F. 
I'm right with you on that. Embarrassing for for baseball that you have that division that is just not competitive and not trying to be either. So. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> well, we were, we kind of highlighted it earlier. So before we talk uh, talk about um, weekend predictions and stuff, uh, more thoughts on the Mets. I don't know how you go from 101 wins mm. to biggest payroll ever to selling off your team to not comp- not competing next year. Like you're just going, <laughs> you're just going to take a year off, man. That like, conversation. What just happened? <laughs> I, hey, so, go ahead, Joe. No, you go ahead. Cause I got to take time to think of what I'm going <laughs> to Well, I'm just thinking if I'm, if I'm Brandon Nemo, who just signed my extension, if I'm Francisco Lindor, who is not a young man, he's you, still got Great plenty of good years. Of, maybe. He's still got plenty of good years ahead of him, but like, how are these guys? Like, what was the conversation when you're talking to Nemo when you're when you're courting him? Because he he was a free, he was a legitimate free agent. This was not a contract extension that was signed. Like, what is that conversation you're having with him in twenty late twenty twenty two about why he should come back and play with the Mets? I'm sure it's not. Hey, we're going to compete in twenty twenty five. Um, and it's I don't. And Cohen said he guaranteed a World Series in five years. Well, this is your number two, and you're taking your number three off, and then your number four, you go roll out five rookies. <laughs> like that's their plan. I just it's still within still within five years. And guess who the rotation is next year? Jose Quintana. And I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. You got McGill and Peterson, two guys that keep sending down triple A, yeah. and all of a sudden they're your two and where's, three starters. Where's the Japanese guy? Oh, oh Sango. Yeah, Sango will be there. That's a good call. But still, like, you're going to have to, I, go, you're going to, have to replace these guys. I'm sure they'll spend big on the free agent market. He said I, they're not going to. I I will. I would love to see what this offseason look like, looks like for them. Because it's, I just, it none of it makes any sense. And it, like, my concern is if, if, obviously this is the conversation that Max was told. I don't know if it was in an effort to try and get him to waive his no trade. But at the same time, like if Nimmo was told something and then now this is now this is coming out different than what Nimmo was told, like players talk. Like he's gonna be like, man, they lied to me. Like and mm-hmm. you have to think that this may have like reverberate into getting players to come there in the future if if Nimmo does again, we we may never hear about it. But if, if something like that had happened, which I assume it would, because, again, you don't go to a team that tells you they're going to compete in three years. Um, most of the time. I mean, certainly, if the, <laughs> if the number is big enough, you do. Jason Worth, Chris Bryant. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah well, it, I wonder. It, but, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I wonder if if either the GM or Cohen comes out quickly and is like, I don't know. I don't know how you, I don't know how you defend that. And I don't know how you say, Oh wait, now that that's, he's lying. That conversation never happened. Or how do you like change the context of that to not sound as bad as it does? Because it sounds, it sounds true. And it sounds true. I mean, like, Hey, we're not going to be Verlander that. kind of back it up without saying so many details. I didn't see that, but I wouldn't, I'm I, not wouldn't sure. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, it's, I don't get it, but I mean, I, I, I mean, feel like this is you've you've said this all the time about how the Mets, if the Mets are going to find a way to mess it up, there, yeah. if there's going to be a team that finds a way to mess it up, it's going to be the Mets. So, so yeah, that I I got my point. And uh, I don't know when it was. This is like episode two or three. We talked about the curse of the Mets. We mm-hmm. talked about solving it. We talked about Cohen's got at least two milli for. Actually, I think we talked about like half a Billy, maybe even during yeah. that episode. Or even we a did. Billy. And if this doesn't prove like you're cursed, there's nothing you can do to win. It needs our help to be solved. And we need upfront payment without a promise of a resolution. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I what, what else does? <laughs> what else does, right? 
So listeners, it's like, it's uh, like an NFL viewers, contract. You know, if you got any uh you got any leads, we have our own leads, Steve, just letting you know. We have several. But uh <laughs> listeners, if you want to give us any more, we'd we would listen. Yeah. Like I'm actually excited to watch them play next year, which is weird because their position players are gonna be a lot of fun. Like you're gonna have Beatty, Acuna could be up, Mauricio should be up, uh Al uh Francisco, you know, year two. Mm-hmm. Um and plus these outfielders for the Astros both seem like legit dudes. Yeah. Gilbert but, Gilbert was a lot of fun watching in college. He's a he's a littler littler guy. Littler guy meaning he's about my size, which is four ten, yeah. about eighty two pounds. That's about right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Altuve um, <laughs> even said like a month ago, Altuve said this guy's mm-hmm. ready to play in the bigs <laughs> when he's playing with rehab on assignment. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who their pitching staff, they're still gonna have, you know, Diaz locking it down. Locking um, what down though? Yeah. So it should be interesting. Yeah. I wonder how Edwin's feeling about what just happened. That's another guy I kind of forgot about. Like it's he's yeah. just like sitting on his couch. Oh he I did see him throwing the other But day, how but... how are they this bad? Like that's... Verlander's ERA is under two right now, isn't it? Scherzer's right. around four and a half, but Scherzer's on it. I mean four and three point one five. Three point one five, okay. Still pretty good. That's still yeah. Um uh, yeah. They just they just should not be. I like but... to. I like to think the Mets are equivalent to the Los Angeles Chargers of the NFL. <laughs> Every year, everybody picks them to win the division, make it to the World Series, and they somehow implode, and it makes my heart happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Harsh. I, I'm very happy over here. So, yeah. <laughs> I just like it too because you spend all this money and you. Just can't win. Like, it's hilarious. It's great. Yep. Well, on, like- uh, on the... Before, are we are we getting past our, our trade yeah, topic? Yeah, move it along. Go for it. Yeah, well, before we do that... Trying to do there. <laughs> I could come with a word, man. So take it over. I'll be back. <laughs> well, think of something while I say this. But I, I'm also saying something that is going to require you to think about what I'm saying. So... Okay. Okay. Use your use your mind. So, listeners, and definitely you guys here. I I got to thinking about this when we talked about Lance Lynn of all people, um, of how much just be of how much being on a winning team can change your um, um, output or outlook or production. You know, you can go Lance Lynn could could rattle off like eight starts and give up one run per start. Because, you know, we're, we're all competitive listeners. If you're listening to this pod, I'm assuming you're a sports fan, you're competitive. If you've been on a crappy team, especially one that's been crappy for like weeks and months, you have to have such a strong mentality not to just be like, I don't care about today. I'm going to put in the effort to get my paycheck. But when you're winning and you go to a winning team or all of a sudden your team is like a buyer, like the Cubs or something like that, that you thought maybe, and eh, we're middling along. Um, I'm kind of curious what you guys think about how much that can impact. Cause I, I think we all know it can, but how much do you think that impacts, you know, going forward, some of these guys that move from last to first or crappy to not so crappy. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I, I think, it does. I like I, growing up, you know, I always heard you, you play to the level of your competition, which is not necessarily exactly what you're saying, but I, I think it goes uh, in the same vein of, of, you know, you play also to the same level of the people you're, you're playing with. Um, like growing up, I, I played on a few different baseball teams and one of them, whenever we were 10, like we, Jared and I talked about was our little league lion, lion legions team, which was awful. Um, so, you know, it's, it was just not then like, you know, you play on another team with some, some people who are a little bit better. Like you're going to, you're, you're going to have more fun. And I, I just think when you, when you're a little bit more fun, you're a little bit more loose, you're a little bit, you know, you're not stressing so much, like trying to make stuff happen. Um, so I feel like when you are kind of in that funk or in that losing streak, um, you do get, you get tense, try hard, make things happen. And I don't think that's, 
it's it's a bad place to be mentally. So if you can go to a team where I wouldn't say a lot of these guys, we didn't see a lot of like the guys traded outside of maybe Verlander and Scherzer, but some of these people that got moved might have been leaned on a little bit more heavily with their older teams than they will be with their new teams. And I'm sure it's probably a little bit of a, you know, weight off their shoulders going to these winning teams, not expected to do maybe quite as much as they were with their previous teams. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's, it's nice to get, go to, go to a a different culture, different mindset going into the, going into work every day, you know, because ultimately this is the job. These guys are doing it day in and day out. And if you're going in and you're, you already know that you're not playing for anything at the end of the year. I imagine that's tough. Yeah, I think we've we've said it a few times over the last couple pods. I think you're going to see a lot of these White Sox guys, ex-White Sox guys, have great August and September. I mean, they've been stuck on apparently a bad culture, bad chemistry team for multiple years now, <laughs> um, and they're out of there. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely definitely something to that, Joe. Yeah, um, I think to piggyback off of Corey a little bit, um, we did play for some really bad little league teams. Uh, but I think hey, just I FYI, play. me and Cooney's ten year old team were amazing. Not not my team, my all star team, but not my. Team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Our all star team is a beast. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, anyway, but I sorry, almost yeah. think I used that as motivation because, like, you knew that when the team came to play your team, when you're not the good team, like they're going to play down, and so then that gives you more motivation to play better. But I think for ad like professional athletes, I almost think people who know who like you go into the season like this team's not where we're supposed to be, or or might be sellers at the trade deadline, like and you're on an expiring contract, they might use that as motivation to be like, I'm going to get out of here and go play for a contender. Um, so I, mm-hmm. I like to think they probably have that more of that mentality because I think it helps them in the long run. But I mean, if you get stuck on a crappy team, I'm sure it's not a great feeling. So it's a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, too bad Lance Lynn's not coming on the podcast where we have to ask him. <laughs> Joe, Joe ruined it for us. Well, at the beginning of the year, we made some predictions. We tried to guess who's going to win each division. In just a second, Corey's really quickly is going to give us a recap of that. But then the conversation is going to go to who do we think has changed their chances the most? Like who who are teams we did not have in the playoffs going to be in the playoffs now because of the deadline? So, Corey. All right. Well. We're skipping over the ones we already made. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, don't forget to. <laughs> We'll just we'll just do divisions and not worry about uh, our, yeah, our World Series. Fine. So, so uh, AL West, uh, Aaron, Jared, and myself had the Astros. Joe had the Mariners. Uh, AL Central, we had split White Sox with Aaron and Jared. Uh, Joe had <laughs> Guardians by fifteen, and I had the Guardians. <laughs> yeah, the it. <laughs> it's in the, it's in the spreadsheet. Guardians yes. by fifteen. Uh, AL East, we had Joe and Aaron with the Blue Jays. Jared and myself with the Yankees. Uh, NL West, uh, Aaron had Diamondbacks. The other three of us had Padres. NL Whoa. Central, NL Central. I can't read what it says for the NL Central, so I'll just move on to the. Uh, oh wait, no, we all had the Cardinals. Okay, that's right. Um, <laughs> NL East, my three cohorts here had the Braves, and I picked the Phillies, um, which is probably not happening. Um, so I have two division winners, two in the wild card, and then the central. Sure. <laughs> hey, what are you talking home. about the central? And that's the best. <laughs> um, as far as teams that I think, I mean, I mean, we're talking about division winner. I guess division winners that we didn't think would be winning the division would be like the teams that we think have helped themselves <laughs> out the most, right? <laughs> that's that's yeah. basically what we're explaining here. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I I didn't think the Rangers would be close. I mean, it's, especially when DeGrom went down. Um, I, I think, to me, they were fourth place team. Uh, the Angels, Astros, and Mariners would all be doing better than them. Um, 
So I, I think that's kind of my big surprise at this point in the season is that they came out. They, I mean, they had a hot start and their run differential ballooned very quickly and they've just kind of kept it up. Um, they've had a little bit of a rough, rough spot lately, but you know, they've, they've had a really good season and had one of the best deadlines. So um, the, the Rangers are my surprise so far. Joe, who you got? Yeah, I I mean, I, I did have Texas fourth. Uh, I don't remember exactly what I said there in my PowerPoint, but it's probably something like I can't even name one person off the Rangers, something like that, stupid. Um, definitely didn't think they'd have the pitching to do what they're doing, but um, they are. Um, Baltimore, I said, wouldn't have the pitching. I still don't think they have the pitching, but they're winning. So I had them in, in third place and not making it. Uh, we won't talk about the centrals. Other than that, I'm spot on, baby. <laughs> Jared, what, Aaron? what do you got, Jared? Oh, um, yeah, I mean, Skip just kind of hit on all the points there. So for me, I think Baltimore stands out the most. I think you could have mm-hmm. looked at that division and I would have been like, they might finish fourth. Um, but I think all their young studs and the veterans, small veterans they do have on there, are just clicking on all cylinders. And I mean, Adley's just becoming probably the best catcher for a long time. Like the dude's just insane. Um, great then, jerseys. Great jerseys. I mean, you know, I love a good jersey. Um, and I think just the NL Central in general. Like no one expected the Reds to be this electric. Yeah. Uh, and they did and they're doing all the right things like they're capitalizing on it and just bringing everybody up and not waiting like so that's sucks they're in our division but it's really cool to see them not hold anything back and just go for it seems like joey Votto's having a lot of fun too i think he's really yeah. embracing he's got an option for next year and they can't be paying too many people so i mean if he wants to stay they better let him stay yeah as a um, team option uh, I think so. I don't know. Corey, look that up real quick. Well, who's the I, you guys talked about? Votto. What's his option? Yeah, what's his <laughs> option? Um, while he's looking that up, as far as teams that change the course of their season because of the deadline, I'm going to go back to the Marlins. Um, will they catch the Braves? I, I surely hope not. I've seen a ten game lead melt in September before, though. Um. <laughs> but they have they have maybe put themselves as the second best team in the east um they the Phillies the Phillies were a close to almost f for me cuz they just didn't do much they added Lorenz and yeah they still needed a third baseman yeah um you know yeah so yeah so the Marlins at least caught the Phillies if not put themselves ahead of the Phillies um with some prospects in triple a ready to support them um yeah because like the res didn't do much at the deadline to propel themselves they'd already gotten hot same with baltimore so yeah i would say texas and the al and florida and the NL um improved their playoff odds the best what do you got for Votto? did you find it <clears throat> yeah it's a 20 million dollar club option which is um Five million less than he's making this year. So it's, yeah, I don't know. I knew um, from my OTP days it wasn't too bad of a deal. Yeah, but all right, we ready to move on to the uh, the weekend predictions? Let's do it. All right. So to recap last week, uh, hey guys, we are all above five hundred. Great job. High Two five. weeks in a row. That's true. Uh, me and Joe were at four and one, Jared and Aaron at three and two. Uh, so Joe, I'm just going to do the win total at this point because, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of words. Joe's got 38, Aaron's got 37, Jared's at 36, and I am still in last at 33. Um, Kevin, I don't know. yeah, I'm, I'm making, making progress. I really wasn't impressed by a lot of the weekend series this weekend. Um, like after these five, it was just like a lot of good teams playing bad teams um but we are going to start all, off yeah these are good picks these are all playoff hopefuls yeah and i think I that know. like I, I like to pick like I, I would like to talk about different teams but 
I think as we get closer to the playoffs, like these are the games that matter. So we might mm-hmm. be talking about a lot of the same teams every week. I still uh, like when you pick the matchup of like the A's and the Rockies. That's fun. Yeah. Well, I, it, I, I was looking out for one of those similar, but I, I didn't see anything that was, was too. I really didn't want to pick the Braves at Cubs, but here we are. That's, that's, that's the last one though. Um, so we're going to start off with Marlins at Rangers. Uh, I'm going to take the Marlins. Um, Sandy, love Sandy. Uh, the Lizard Man, Jesus Lazardo. Uh, I think they can win. They can win those games. Those PC. That'll. I think that'll be Montgomery's first game with the Rangers. I'm not entirely sure on that though. So don't uh, don't quote me. Um, but we'll just kind of see how those those guys go. I'm not too impressed with John Gray or Andrew Heaney, but Heaney just had a good start yesterday. But... He does that every now and yeah. then, and then sometimes yep. he doesn't. So he's already had it. Um, so it's, it's out of his system. This one's going to be bad. Uh, I'm going to take the Marlins. Jared. Texas. Joe. Now that the trade deadline's over, I'm probably really, really going to heavy lean heavy on the team I think is going to win. No, I'm probably going to lean pretty heavy on like the favorite. <laughs> I don't know. And you can say this is two playoff teams, so they're pretty evenly matched up, but I'll say all that to say Texas. That's a lot of words. To, of how, nothing. how did Seager do today? So they just like <laughs> randomly activated him. Like they put their lineup out, Seager's not in it. Then they activate him and he started. I don't know. know. You, you've got a computer in front of you just like I do. Look at the stat, man. Uh, with that being said, I've been talking Marlins all day today, so I guess Marlins. Mm, okay. Well, now I'm looking up how Corey Seager did. Well, the the Rangers won eleven to one, um, and Corey Seager went two for four with three RBIs and one home run. So pretty good. He just keeps hitting. I don't man. He he has done that his whole life. MLB Network, I think it was, did talk about how he would have the biggest benefit from no shift, and it seems mm-hmm. to be the case. All right, moving on to D backs at Twins. Uh, D backs kind of scuffling, and then I just like this these twins pitchers. Um, it's gonna be a good matchup on Sunday with Gallon and Pablo, but uh, I'm gonna go with the twins because I like their pitchers, and that's that's a big part of baseball. The last I heard, that's true. I'm gonna go with the Diamondbacks for the newly acquired outfielder who can't see and Tommy Pham. He can get stabbed though. He is like at the top of all like stat cast, you know, advanced stats as far as hitting this year. Stab cast? Stat cast. Oh, okay. It's a new oh, stat. I didn't, re- I didn't realize <laughs> how good he'd been playing. He hadn't been playing much, but. Pretty yeah, no he team seems didn't. to want to keep him. Yeah. Um, or every team you want wants to... him. That's a good point, man. You should be an agent. <laughs> um, you, you want the long answer or the short answer, Corey? Uh, I, give me a, make it as long as possible. Ooh, I thought you were going to go the other way, so I really didn't think of anything. Let's okay. go with Twins. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm going deep back because I need them back uh, on the <laughs> right side of the track. So they're slowly slipping in the standings. So Kelly Gallon, come on. Next one is the Mariners at Angels. Um, Mariners, I also thought, kind of had a confusing trade deadline because there were some pieces they could have moved um, and didn't. Uh, but they did DFA Colton Wong, so that was kind of sad. Uh, but then I just, again, I think the Angels are are rejuvenated, revitalized. Other re-words that mean the same thing um, in a list. Uh, I'm taking the Angels. Yeah, well, there we go. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's some more. I'll go Angels as well, but I'll say it's because of the three R's, kind of like you said, Corey. Rest, recuperation, and conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going the Mariners. The uh, Angels just got whooped by Atlanta. And oh, they everybody are... gets whooped by Atlanta, though. I know, but they just – outside of Otani, I don't think they can pitch. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, I loved the Matt Chapman little – um, yeah. thing that got caught in the dugout where he's talking yep. to his manager and he says why the F word did we pitch to him he's the only guy on the team that can hit 
And then he got intentionally walked like four times in the next two games. So. Yeah, I think he walked three straight play appearances after that. Yeah, great job, Matt Chapman. Somebody, more people, I guess, should tell their managers not to pitch to show. Hey, <laughs> especially with that. That's before they traded for Crone and Gritchick too. So it's like, yeah, what are they doing? Um, f- fun baseball stuff. Uh, next is the Dodgers at Padres. I don't. I imagine we might all be on the same page here, but I'd be. Somebody please surprise me. I'm going to take the Dodgers, even though the, again, fan graphs percentages here have the Padres favored to win all games. But those four guys, the Dodgers are thrown out there, walking out there are not super promising or encouraging, but I, I'm not going to bet against the Dodgers unless maybe they're playing the Braves. So I mean, Dodgers. Lance Lynn's definitely walking out there for sure. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lance? And that's why I picked the Padres. Nice. Yeah, Padres, they don't care. Season's over. Past tread deadline. They didn't make no moves. So uh, Dodgers want to win. They'll win. So who are you taking here? The Dodgers? Yeah, that was a confusing yeah. answer. Yeah, the Dodgers. That was an okay. obvious answer. <laughs> you can't dodge them, man. I thought you picked Padres. I did, they too. Don't care. What did I say that made me remotely? They don't care. They're going to play nice and loose and win. Yeah. Uh I'm going with the Padres. Snow has been lights out. Rich Hill, old man versus Lance Lynn. That's gonna be a fun matchup. Did, have you, did you see Snell's splits like after they signed Gary Sanchez? Like ever since they signed Gary Sanchez, Snell has been awesome. But Gary Sanchez still Darvish has been pitching well too, isn't he? Uh he's he's pretty streaky. He can be super good or he can be super not so good. Um, their stats, like they hit like 200, like 220 with runners scoring position, something like that as a team. Like some of their average stats are just so ridiculously bad on a team full of superstars. It just cannot stay that way. So they're mm-hmm. they're bound and determined just to go off for a three week stretch. I mean, they, they just have to. Yeah, and this is the type of series that will get that going. I think. We'll see on next week on the next episode. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Um, last one we're going to wrap it up bum, with bum, is the bum. Braves at Cubs. Um, obviously, the pitching matchup here just heavily weighted towards the Cubs. Hendricks, Stroman, Steele. Win, win, win. <laughs> um, I'm going to take the Cubs. Braves. Oh, well. Have fun Sorry. losing. Uh, Hendricks picked against Cardinals the other day and gave up three pretty early. And I was like, oh my gosh, just keep piling on. Then he went like seven, still only gave up three. He um, doesn't. So, so he's, yeah, he's. Strowman's not pitching. So who's pitching? That's. I pulled those from today. Is Strowman like legitimately hurt? hurt? Like he legitimately? Went on, he went on the 15 day IL. Got a boo boo on his hip. Oh. No well. matter who's pitching, obviously they're going to lose Atlanta. Well, thanks for your vote of confidence, guys. <laughs> Braves are going to have a plus 20 run differential in this series. Oh, um, I'll write that down. Yeah, maybe somebody somebody should. Um, let's hey, did see. you see they hit uh, four, over 400 against the Brewers? First time that's happened in like five years that a team hit over 400 hmm. in the whole series. It's it's yeah. Hayden Wisniewski now, which is I'm still excited about Hayden Wisniewski as long as he can oh, keep the ball in the ball in the ball in the yard, which is a tough feat, especially for the against the Braves. But um, I did see those that like, the those are every, really tough sentences, Corey. Yeah, <laughs> you got scared. Um, you couldn't even say it. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> I'm sweating. Um, Turned and turned back into the scat man there. You got the NL leader <laughs> in home runs. You got the MVP favorite, and you got Nicky Lopez. What else do you want? Um, apparently more because you gave him a B minus. But yeah, I forget. I forget exactly I want what Jorge you said. Mateo. You wanted a left fielder, I think. Yeah. Um. We'll see. I think the, I think the Cubs sweep still, but that's you. You also Sweet. have a plus, plus twenty win differential. Run, okay, I'll write that win you. run differential. Yeah, for, or, <laughs> I don't think I'm they're going to have a plus I'm a twenty little, win. I'm a little flustered. Um, <laughs> anywho, well, Steele's lefty too, right? So I mean, the Braves destroy that. Yeah. So their best but, pitchers are going to get rocked. It's going to be fun. Well, we'll see. anybody want to go Friday? Nobody, nobody want to go with me Friday. See free pitch. 
I'm scared we of trains. We just didn't want to travel with you. <laughs> I'm scared of trains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so they're split on Rangers Marlins, split on Twins D-backs. Three Angels, one Mariners, split on Dodgers Padres. Nice job, guys. Although it is the same split. We all, so me and Joe have the same picks besides the Braves. That's that's a fun time, um, which we've been hot lately, guessing. And I got the Cubs to sweep. So when you're you know, hot, you're hot. You know what? Uh, hey, it's good. Burnt. Gold. Anyway, <laughs> that's that's all I got for weekend <laughs> predictions. Back to you. I got nothing else. Anybody else got anything? How come Tim Anderson didn't get traded? Because he's been he's playing still got terribly. that year control. Oh, does he? Okay, that's all I got. But he's hitting 400 since the All Star break almost. Mm-hmm. Where are we at the Louisa Rice watch? He's at like what three eighty one? Yeah, I was just looking at okay. that. So uh, Aaron, you had three seventy five. Joe had three seventy two. Jared had four hundred one. I had three eighty seven. So we we've kind of split the difference between me and Aaron right now. Mm-hmm. We're close. He's got a better team around him. See if he keeps going now. That's true. All right. So next week, guys, we'll be back with another edition um, of Break Your Position. And we will keep track on the playoff races that heats up. See those Cubs after this weekend fall eight games behind their division, which they would have sold. But it's too late now. Now they're going to get nothing for Stroman and Belly. And lose candy all at the same time. It's going to be a good weekend for those Cubbies. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, other than that, go Lance Lynn. You're my boy. What? You're, You're not do- the podcast You're doppelganger. Like that. <laughs> I am all not right. signing off. Do we nope. need a disclaimer like the that's, opinions that's the expressed game. by Aaron or did not represent the podcast yeah, as a good. whole? Put it, put it right here. Yeah. You're the one I who did... added to this, so you're talking oh, yeah, to yourself. Right. Uh, I did see that once Rich Hill plays, it'll be the first time the two oldest guys played for the same team or something like that. Because him and Cruz, uh, Cruz isn't there anymore, but got to love the old guys yeah. hanging in there. They're old guys. Woo-hoo! Nothing else? I was going to keep rambling. Yeah. Please Don't excellent. forget to break, break your position. Your position. Oh, break it. Meow, 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 meow,